I forgot I was going to get my keyboard and do it, but it, can you do it with me, Jordan? What? Bum, 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 One more time. Bum, 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 bum. And then this one too. Orm, 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 orm. And then this one. Na, na, na. Gosh, please. Nah, nah, Welcome nah, to the Macabre Podcast Universe. Nah, we exist nah, to nah, prove people wrong nah, when they say nah, sequels nah, are never better than the originals. Nah, nah, I'm Micah. Nah. I'm Jordan. <laughs> 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 I'm Jordan. That's Micah. And the special soundtrack today is included because this is the end of the DCEU. It can finally be laid to rest with the highest dishonors of any film franchise in history. I, well, I think the highest dishonor is probably the mon- the dark monster universe they tried to launch yeah, with yeah. the mummy. But um, yes, today I am excited because, you know, the DC Extended Universe has been a tough series to cover. It has some highs. There are some great movies. Highs or lows. Give it to me. I mean... Birds of Prey, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Suicide Justice League, Squad. Justice League, Zack Snyder, thus or no, not the Suicide Squad, but Suicide Squad, yes, or whichever one is. It's Suicide Squad because we were watching, we were in the theaters yesterday watching movie. That is why you're here today to listen about. Yes, yes. And they showed the trailer for that new Jason Statham movie. And we were like, hmm. And then it said from the director that brought you Suicide Squad and Fury, and we both were like, ah, yeah. It, it it was like just a dumb enough pre- premise that I'm like I'm kind of on board. If you don't know, it's a movie called The Beekeeper. Just watch the trailer, and I'll leave it at that. I'm not into it, so I would like that to be on record. I think that movie is gonna suck. Oh, I was into it until it said you still David seemed Ayer. into it after. No, the fact. but then as it kept going, I was like, they're really committing to the fact that because he's a beekeeper, he's good at action, and I kind of have to respect that. So I, I can't. Yeah, it looked stupid. Anyway, um. Yeah, we're putting to bed a series, which is exciting to us because we cover a lot of superheroes on this podcast, and I love franchises, I love superheroes, but frankly, I'm I'm ready for a breather, and next year we only have one superhero movie to cover, which is Deadpool, so it's like, this feels pretty good. Yeah. Um, and if in case you're wondering, we have no plans on covering James Gunn's universe, because guess what? We want to go see Superman Legacy and just enjoy it. We'll get around to it. We just don't want urgency about it. Yeah. So it was hard enough seeing this movie. It yeah, it was tough because we had to schedule it around Christmas and all that stuff. But and we baby and baby. I will say the series going out on a high note. I know critically it's kind of like ugh, but I liked this movie. It's not the best movie. It's not the best movie in the series. No. But it was a pretty fun time, which for Aquaman, that's all you need. Yep. Yep. Uh yeah, it's 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 interesting. I'm I'm still kind of parsing my thoughts. But I'm I, glad that we rewatched the first one before absolutely, this. Absolutely, yeah. Um, because again, I still love that movie. It's still gonzo uh-huh. crazy weird, but it's kind of it, it's bad. There there's some real stinky stuff in it. Yeah. Um well, for and every... because of it, like seeing this movie, there's also some clunkiness. Oh, absolutely. That I think it's good that I didn't have just rose colored glasses on the first one. Yes. About it. D- did you notice in this movie that they made a meta commentary about something you were joking about in the first movie? What? About the jump scares? Yeah, yeah. He said, I, I hate it when that happens or <laughs> something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Because there's could... actually like five or six jumps, jump scares in the first one. Yeah, where people are just doing something and then the bad guy just explodes out of nowhere. And it's not like set up and you like, oh yeah, this is directed by one of our great horror directors. And in this movie, they made fun of that. Yeah. I guess enough people must have been like, seriously? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. Um, Yeah, I, yeah, I'm still parsing out my feelings a little bit, but I, I do feel like this comes out three years ago, massive hit. But th- this coming out post Flash, post Marvels, post no Quantumania. No anymore. Post Shazam, it's just not something people really want to see. Yeah. I think it'll limp along fine, especially internationally. Yeah. And I think actually one of its greatest attributes is it has no connections to any universe stuff. Nope. 
There was actually a point, I don't remember where it was in the movie, but there was a point when they said they were going to go, like, talk to someone or they need... Yeah, I think it was him when he was presenting that he needed to talk to Orm. And I was like, oh, no, is he going to go talk to, like, Batman or something? Oh, I'd never thought about that. That's just but, what I... Yeah. Like, where my mind went. And uh, he didn't. Yeah. And this movie has no... Nothing. I don't even think there's a Wayne Enterprise logo to be seen. No, thankfully. So... I was I was happy about that, and I think that... And the bad guy was a direct result from the first movie. It wasn't some bad yep. guy that was created because Batman or Superman did something. Yeah, they didn't try to bring back Zod on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, they didn't. I was kind of waiting for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so... But before we get all the way in it, you know the story. It's a new episode. It's a new movie. So we're going to keep it spoiler-free. Uh, and then we'll give you that warning and spoil it up after that. So let me tell you about how this movie was made. And we're going to be stepping in it a little bit. I'm talking a little bit of controversy, okay? Okay. Can you guess what <laughs> what I could possibly be talking about when I mention controversy in this movie? In this movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this movie is directed... We pooped the bed. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is directed by James Wan. Uh, and so... In between this movie and the first Aquaman, he made Malignant. Yes, he did. Uh, and boy, did he ever. Yeah, he made that movie. If you have not seen Malignant, the best way to do it is, and I know we say this sort of thing all the time, but truly this might be the best example of this. Do not read anything. Do not look up a trailer. Just turn on the movie. And, when and you're, have fun. Well, when you're thinking, this is cheesy and kind of bad, just know it's it's all setting up dominoes so that those dominoes can fall like a like a casino in Ocean's Eleven on a heist. So, um, yeah, he he wanted to give Aquaman time to breathe before making a sequel, and it sounds like the studio was very pro that. Oh, well, the first one made so much money; it was their first billion dollar baby. Yeah, which is odd. Uh, th that's why all of this has been so odd. That for like this whole year, Warner Brothers has been like, "Come see the Flash! Come see the Flash! Come see the Flash!" And then they're like. Yeah, we got an Aquaman movie. Whatever. I know. And they have... It's like they've been ashamed of this movie. It's, isn't it surprising that they... That Zaslav's been, like, canning all of these movies that are completely done, and he just didn't can this one? I yeah, know. I yeah. know the first one made a lot of money, but also it's like he... It seems like he's killed projects that would have made a lot... Would have made a lot of money. Yeah. You would have made your money back. You probably would have made a tiny, like a little bit of a profit right. from it. That it's like, yeah, that's we just dumped it. Well, the guy, what is he from? Like a cell phone company before Discovery? Like he he doesn't like movies. He doesn't no. know anything about movies. We need to go back. I mean, this had its time and problems, but we need to go back to like the seventies when there were producers who were like snorting like three pounds of cocaine a day, and they're like, "You want to make a cool movie? I want to see it. I will give you." $10 million to make whatever you want and I'll fight for was, you. I'll fight for you and then you make a movie for me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Let's, but Zasloff is, is bad and we don't like him. Yeah. And he doesn't like movies. With a name like that, that's a yeah. super villain name. He, he's trying to shut down TCM. Yeah. The guy can go, he can go. He can go take a short walk off, uh, he can go take a long walk off a short bridge, not a short walk off a long bridge. Yeah. He never make it to the end. He can take a short walk to hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the screenplay to this movie is David Leslie Johnson McGoldrich, Rick, sorry, McGoldrick, who wrote the first Aquaman movie. And he also has a story by credit, as well as James Wan, as well as Jason Momoa, oh. as well as Thomas Pa'a Sibet. So a lot of cooks in this kitchen, mm -hmm. but it seems like they're all in it together. Mm -hmm. Cinematographer is Don Burgess, who worked on Aquaman. Music is by Rupert, Rupert Gregson Williams, who worked on Aquaman. So kind of getting more or less the same crew. Yeah. Plus a couple extra story by. Um, this movie comes out, well, yeah, it came out last weekend, and it has a $205 million budget. That's a lot. That is a lot. I, I expected it to be higher since Marvel's was three hundred. <laughs> Jeez, that movie was that much. <laughs> Wasn't it? I don't know. I'm almost positive I it was 300. I pretty much tune out anytime you put a number out there. So but Yeah. Um, okay, so here's what happened. During Aquaman, Momoa pitches a sequel. He is into Aquaman. Aquaman and I love is that his, he's into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, 
In February 2019, Warner Brothers hires Noah Gardner and Aiden Fitzgerald to write a, a The Trench spinoff movie. Yes. That will later in 2021 get scrapped in April of that okay. year. No, 2022, I'm sorry. Um, and then this movie's supposed to come out December 16th, 2022. But Juan didn't want to rush a sequel, so they don't push him. Um, this is not based on any specific comic run. Just an a, amalgamation of lots of stuff. Yeah, that's how it felt. For That's just how it felt. Yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at yesterday. Right. Yes. Um, and then during during this downtime, there's this thing that we've had to dance around on this podcast before uh, where Johnny Depp and Amber Heard uh, are, are in a very famous legal battle. Yes. Over who pooped the best. <laughs> Who's yeah. meaner than the other one. Do yes. slash both guilty for being mean to each other. Sounds like they're both as bad a person as you can be. Yeah. And and it sounds like shouldn't be together. They bring out only the worst of each other. Yeah. Now it is interesting because, you know, Johnny Depp won that trial. And and I really I really think both people are toxic. I'm not yeah, yeah. taking a pro stance on either one. But it does feel a little bit weird that there was there was so much hate on Amber Heard. It was like a whole lev- different level of hate. Yeah. And oh, it was yeah. kind of like, so when people were sharing videos or asking me about it, I was like, I don't know. Yeah. And it, this is gross that we're invested in this as a yeah. society. Yeah. Um, and like, the, it's not like it was a closed jury. Like, the jury can like be on social media and see how everyone's like making fun of her and stuff. So, I don't know. Well, the jury can't. This could, because it's not, it was a civil case. Oh, it was a civil case. Yeah, which made oh, me yeah, be like, that's right, oh, that's right. Okay. Unless, could the judge order that though? But he didn't. But he didn't. Okay. Yeah. But he could. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Either either way, it's it's all it's basically just a, a show. You know? It's just hot gossip. Yeah. That we, that we, they just airing out their dirty laundry for literally the world to see. So it's exciting. Yeah, but I mean, he's abusive for sure. So don't don't just be like, Yeah, I'm pro Johnny Depp. They're both abusive. Yeah. Let's not deal with them again yeah. in Hollywood, please. Okay. Um so there's a petition to fire Amber Heard and it has four million signs at least yeah um and and it is interesting i do think this is an interesting point johnny depp was removed from secrets of dumbledore yeah but she was not removed from this movie oh. that is interesting hmm. same company warner brothers oh that is so, interesting. so that's interesting um i think you easily could have removed her yeah i yeah i don't know like i said I mean, yesterday she's not even... we've been writing women out of movies for <laughs> since the beginning of film so they yeah. could have figured it yeah. out <laughs> Um, but in the defamation trial, she, she said that they didn't want her in this movie and they pared her role down. So she stated that in the trial. Um, like how this has affected her probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Hamada, who was a producer at the time, um, he said, no, the movie was always supposed to be like this. And Juan was like, yes, the first movie's, you know, it's the romance and the love. The second movie was always going to be a bro adventure. You know, who knows? Um, and then this is a quote, uh, <laughs> and this is crazy. If, if you're like this, don't be like this. Depp fans paid the court fees for the release of documents from Hertz therapist, Dr. Don Hughes. The raw notes scribbled on a legal pad were part of last year's high profile trial in which Depp largely prevailed. They describe a hostile Aquaman set where on, where an allegedly intoxicated Jason Momoa dressed like Depp and pushed to have Heard booted from the role of aquatic superhero Mara. He... So, a couple of Ooh, things. That's gross. It's weird that Depp fans would pay for that. Yes. Uh, and that's crazy. Yes. Two, uh, I noticed it in this movie, and then thinking about to Fast X and stuff, Jason Momoa just dresses like this. He doesn't dress like Johnny oh, Depp. Oh, okay. Because she, she mentioned, like, he has the rings and everything like him, and it's like... He's just, ex- he's an eccentric weirdo. Yeah. I mean, Jason, I, I have not seen anything that's not like that Jason Momoa has been, probably Dune, I guess. But anything I've seen him in, it is just Jason Momoa reading mm-hmm. lines. He, he's not acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is having so much fun in these movies, and I enjoy watching that. Yeah. Well, he's acting in Fast X. He, he is, is he acting, is, but baby. It, but it still is a, that's Jason Momoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's always, it's always like fascinating when, um, an actor and I don't know how it all shakes down. Yeah. But basically will not change their physical appearance to, <laughs> know, to, to fit whatever role they've been casted in. Obviously he's casted 
to be Jason Momoa. And isn't it funny that it's almost always 100% just guys that are really big? Yeah. And everyone else has well, to like... There's a genre that's like a sub yeah, yeah, yeah. or something that, that people pay for it. It's just funny that like... That like just the big guys are always the same in all their movies, yeah. and then everybody else has to. But adjust. that's that's probably been the same since Schwarzenegger. But yeah, probably so. Stallone and Schwarzenegger kind of established that. Yeah. But we watched Copland, and Stallone was a uh, chunky in that. He was so good, and that it was crazy. Good movie. Yeah. Um. But yeah, basically, from what I could tell, having not been on set and not knowing, I I think the uh, Momoa being drunk on set, like harassing her, is pretty much debunked. Oh, okay. it, but maybe not. It's just everyone on set is like, he's really professional. He'll, he'll drink a beer because he likes beer, but not like, he's not drunk on set. Okay. And that seems, I mean, that seems right to me. I mean, he's Aquaman. He he did save the world several times. Doesn't allow him to be drunk on set. Yeah. It doesn't. Interesting. <laughs> um. So ultimately the studio never... Um, pulls the trigger and doesn't fire herd. But part of that may be because Elon Musk, her former boyfriend, never forget. What? Uh, I didn't know that. Had one of his litigators send a scorched earth letter to Warner Brothers threatening to burn the house down if the actress wasn't brought back for the sequel, says a source familiar with the behind the scenes battle. I'm so disinterested in any of this. Warner Brothers caved more? and moved forward with herd. That's actually all of the herd stuff. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I just was like, oh yeah, that's weird. I did not know that. So you have all this controversy. Then you have um, COVID involved, trying to figure out shooting and stuff. Um, And so then they begin filming June 2021. Then March 2022, they adjust the schedule because there's just too much backed up on a VFX. Mm -hmm. And so then this movie is moved to uh, March of 2023. There's all these reports that... Ben Affleck is going to be in it. Then there's reports that Michael Keaton's going to be in it. But then the, the Flash has been moved ahead of Aquaman so instead of behind. Be so then it wouldn't make sense to have Keaton. None of them are in it. I don't. I think those are all just fake rumors. Because I just yeah that the wh- where would they be e- exactly? Which I mean, many of the cameos in the other movies. It's like what are they doing here? Right. But you know, it's so hilarious how like you know when like Phase Two of Marvel happened and there was this element of like are we really doing all these cameos with all these characters they're so pointless and it's crazy looking back on a lot of those and how marvel handles their cameos to how dc handles their cameos yeah because like the marvel stuff feels like it actually does kind of make sense but a a lot of the a lot of the dc stuff is like you got to squint your eyes and plug your (laughs) ears for this cameo to make any sense at all um but yes, so then uh, after the merger of Discovery and uh, Warner Brothers in August 2022, they move this to Christmas Day, and then they move it back a few days and then move it forward a few days. It comes out the 22nd, um, and they did do three separate sets of reshoots, which is somewhat significant. Um, it, it did feel like as this was getting closer to coming out that that it was just a cursed movie, potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, kind yeah, of like flash. Yeah. And it, it is crazy how maybe kind of a similar, you have a lot of the same situations plaguing both movies, you know, yeah. uh, a controversial actor and then, you know, reshoots and all this stuff. And it's crazy how much more coherent this movie is than the flash. Oh my gosh. I know. So why don't you hit me with a couple of actors? Ooh. Uh, do we have any actually do we really have any have new we ever players? ever covered Martin Short? No, absolutely not. He plays the Kingfish. Kingfish. Um, he is famously Jack Frost in Santa Claus 3. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's also in Three Amigos. Hilarious movie. Um, He's in Only Murders in the Building, a movie Micah and I will never finish. Show, but... Oh, a show. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Father of the Bride Part 3. Uh, what's the, what's the movie Clifford? He's in Clifford, right? He is. Like the, not the big red dog, but famous comedy from the 80s. Oh, I've never heard of that movie. I think it's called Clifford. And, and I think it's so on and so forth. It. He's a comedy legend. Yeah. 
But yeah, who else? Uh, Jenny Z- Zhao plays Stingray. That's like the the right hand girl of piloting Manta. the ship, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, she is in California, South. Wisconsin. I think this is her first English role. I would believe that. So, yeah. Um, she's Portuguese. I was trying to figure Portuguese. out what she was saying okay. at one point because she was speaking in a different language at one point. Uh-huh. I was like, is that French? Is that Spanish? Portuguese. I think I thought it was just a made-up language. For the, like, I thought like that too for Some a Atlantean language or something like that. So I'm assuming she's in a lot of Portuguese stuff. Yeah, yep. Um, but stuff like California, South. Um. Frost Boys Pilgrimage. <laughs> but yeah, who who else? Well, I don't know if we talked about him in the 2018 Aquaman, but there is this really cool guy who plays someone called the Brine King. We've covered this actor before. Yeah, just mention him John again. John Reese davies Yeah, and again... So, I thought he... Di- well, we just watched the first one. Uh-huh. But, um, I did not think we'd get him back. No. He plays the Brine King. It, it is just crazy it's that... a big crustacean. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, I, I can see someone walking out of this movie and just hating it. And I would not necessarily think that that's, like, a wrong opinion to have. Like, I get it. But, but... Unlike, um, I'll compare it to Flash. Flash, you have all these floating babies that he's saving, that the Flash is saving, and and it's Both movies have baby stuff. Strange and and crazy. Okay, that's weird. It's a kind of a dumb scene. It's not that interesting, and it's just uncanny. But in this movie, you have someone like Orm, and you have uh, discussions of the Ocean Master title, and then you have a whole um, host of people called. Uh, the Necris, a, a new kingdom. And not only the Necris... Not Necrus, a new kingdom, an ancient kingdom. What are it, you talking about? Well, it's lost. Yeah, and it's stricken from the Chronicles. Yeah. Folks, we're talking about kingdoms that have been stricken from the Chronicles. We're not just running around in parallel universes. Also, this movie looks better than a lot of superhero movies because it is colorful. Uh-huh. And I do think there is very apparent wonky VFX, very apparent. Yes. This movie looked worse than the first one. It really did, yeah. Um, however, the action was still way more interesting than than a good chunk of superhero movies in general. Like that one scene yeah. underwater when um, Manta is attack, attacks Atlantis. Yeah. And they're trying to, to escape, and Nicole Kidman's part of it. You know, she's doing her whole thing. It looked really weird, but it also looked cool. Yeah, it borders on stylized. That's how know? I felt. That's how, I, that's how I had to compartmentalize it in my brain. Yeah. But, and and this is, uh, you bring up another good point with Manta, David Kane. Um, A lot of other superhero movies don't have Manta. No. Or David Kane in them, which is actually a pretty huge problem. If or Yaya Abdul Mateen the third. Second. The third? The second. Yeah. Oh, we, but the third. We've yet to have a third. <laughs> so, you know, these are problems we see with other movies. Do other movies have giant grasshoppers that chase Aquaman? Not really. Not as far as I know. And that's like a huge problem. And again, other movies, there's only two movies in existence so far that have Orm, which is actually a huge problem still. <laughs> <laughs> huge problem that I have with movies. Uh, so, you know, and and as far as I know, there's still just one movie with a battle for the title of Ocean Master. So, you know, it's like you win some, you lose some, but the win column is much bigger than the lose <laughs> column. <laughs> Should we start spoiling this movie? Yeah. Spoiler alert! 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 Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay, how this movie start? How does this movie start? Yeah. <clears throat> it's like voiceover, and he's he's saying, you know, a lot of stuff has changed. I'm doing the King of Atlantis stuff. and Pretty cheesy. Which, after rewatching the first movie, the first 20 minutes of Aquaman 1 are like, uh-oh. Is this yeah. movie not going to hold up? And I did kind of think the same thing again, where I was like, ooh. Yeah. This is like cheesy um which i love some cheese i do james wan is a very cheesy director oh yeah um but yeah it, it was like it was this gonna carry over to yeah anything else so you know he's establishing i'm king of atlantis i don't like to be king of atlantis 
Uh, you know, it's it's far more political. Basically, the board doesn't let him do anything. Yeah, he falls asleep while Brian King is talking, which seems like an impossibility. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's he's with Mara. They have a baby. Um, so he's navigating fatherhood while also being the king. Yeah, and there was baby antics. Really, really cheap parenting baby jokes. But as a parent now, it's like okay, that's funny. <laughs> and there's and it's just like so dumb and so bad. But I will eat this apple until I'm done eating it. I I know this is a nightmare. Jordan's eating the apple, and so she takes a bite, and then she swings away from the mic, and it looks like she's peeking around a corner of a building to look at me. <laughs> But anyway, I, I think what's uh, worse than the this cheesy montage is, is the doing convers- this Apple thing. Oh no, no. Is, is the conversations he has with he has with his dad. Yeah, they're really bad. The, yeah. the acting is bad, uh, especially the second time when they're at the kitchen table after he had put him to bed or something, and they have a Guinness together. They have a Guinness together in all yeah. the scenes, but not a Corona, a Guinness. No, they're a Guinness fam. Yeah, um, they're at the kitchen table. They both he like crack open a cold one together, and his dad's just giving him like obligatory parenting advice. Yeah, yeah. And it's just really stale. I I think I'm like I I just thought like I get they're relaxing, they're just sitting at a table talking. I get it, but I think they need to be doing something with their hands. Sure. To at least provide like some kind of when they're in this like happening. man cave thing where there's like motorcycles and, and guitars everywhere, <laughs> which was in the first movie too. When I don't well, remember. Not not the motorcycles, but there were guitars in the house. Yeah. But it's like, oh brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there is this scene where Jace Momona is just Mamona? peeling Momona is Moana. <laughs> is just peeling out around <laughs> just, his just, baby. Just laughing. Just showing off. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> so all of this stuff on land is like zoinks a little bit. You know what? What? Because we were talking about this yesterday. Uh huh. Yeah, Not, this is unbelievable with this apple thing. What kind of apple is it? Honey's crisp. That's why it's so crisp. Honey's crisp. Oh, honey's honey's that's, crisp. <laughs> it's a little so more fancy. We, our biggest criticism with Thor mm. movies is it doesn't take place on Asgard enough. There's not enough Asgard. Not enough Asgard. And frankly, a lack of imagination, I think, for how, how mythical it could be. Agreed. Yeah. And I think that's why they're too afraid to have more of the movies set on Asgard. Yeah. This is well. They've destroyed the it answer, now. But yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. this is the answer. They they we've been through Thor, and they're like, no, what people want is underwater Atlantis stuff. Yeah, a whole yeah, kingdom. we have some above surface stuff, but it's so minuscule. And uh-huh. this, I mean, other than the fun Indiana Jones stuff later, but that yeah, that's, that's different. That's part of that's part of the, the fantasy. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they they just they go for it. That's why this stuff is like. Just like with Thor, real world surface level stuff is brings the movie to a grinding halt. Uh huh. This movie, they get rid of it really quickly. They just go through it really quickly. Which they do in the first one as well. Yes, yeah. they do. They just work through it. Yeah. Establish the characters, establish their desires, wants, needs. Mm-hmm. Then it's then it's underwater time. We're getting wet all movie. But in all of this, we learn that his baby can communicate with fish. Yeah. He's destined for great things. And there were clearly two different babies, so I was assuming that uh, this that certain babies that were not in like the main main plot. I'm like, okay, that's a reshoot baby. Yeah. Um, and they looked very different. To yeah. Put it mildly, <laughs> I think if you look closely, you'll see a pretty huge difference on each baby. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, so th- there is some stuff in this movie that to me felt like reshoots slash studio notes. Yeah. Why were Jason Momoa's contacts basically white? It was terrifying to look at. Yeah. And I feel like that was maybe reshoots, which doesn't make no sense. Yeah. But like, like his color, eyes looked way different than the previous movie. The previous movie, they're gold. Yeah. I I, I don't I never get it in franchises yeah. when it's the next movie and people like look different and it, they look different in ways that they sh- can't. Logically. Yeah, 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 right. And it's right. like, did you just throw away the specific contacts you needed, or like the order? Yeah, after yeah. The first like, you like, there's didn't no think way you were gonna make more. I don't get stuff like that. His eyes looked weird, but it wasn't the whole movie. Underwater, yeah. it's because everything digital, digitally yeah. touched, but weird. It, it was weird, and it was it was like a little too piercing. Mm-hmm. 
And and I think so. A, a conversation I keep having after watching these two movies back to back is, I just can't tell if Jason Momoa is a good actor or not. Yeah. Well, you've seen him in Game of Thrones. I have, what and he think? was good. Um, and and there is a certain like je ne sais quoi to someone being a superhero and carrying a movie. Yeah. But that it it does feel like there's a bit of a disconnect between him. Like it looks like he's on a set. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Oh, that's the whole larger than life thing. Yeah. That he falls into that camp with the other dudes. You're, I just, you're not watching Aquaman, you're watching Jason Momoa be yeah. Aquaman, you know? I mean, I I'm not I'm not saying he's bad and he is in Dune and he's good in Dune. I just think And it's like when he's really good like in Fast and Furious. It's because they d- played to his strengths. Yeah. I think he was doing a little bit of something. But it was still weird. In this movie? No, fast. Oh, he's he's doing a lot of something. Yeah, but I mean, but it's still Jason Momoa. Yeah, yeah. This movie, the Aquaman character is just Jason Momoa. Right. I just, yeah, if, if I were him, we were talking about this when he left the movie, and I don't know if he's got the goods to do this, but the fact that he's worked with Denis makes me feel like maybe he can, is if I were him, I would say, okay, no action blockbusters, nothing that has like over a hundred million dollar budget. I just want to work with prestigious directors and that's it for the next like five to 10 years. And I would, I would, you know, and, and, and we were trying to figure out what that could be. Cause it's like, I don't think he's going to like star in a Steven Spielberg movie necessarily, Yeah, but maybe he could get hired and say a Chad Sahelski's next project Yeah, and be like a brute and work on that. Like basically say Dave Bautista has the best career that a wrestler has ever had and I'm in that, that camp. Career. Like, send me on that trajectory. That would be interesting because Dave Bautista is really, he has got the best career. He will get an Oscar nom by the time he lays his head down to sleep. Yeah. For eternal night. For tonight. No, for eternal night. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's going to be that <laughs> fast. Um. Yeah, he has like, that's the career you want. Yeah. And it's just so hilarious how much he's dunking on people like The Rock and stuff. Mm-hmm. John Cena's having fun though. I like. I, He's I having like fun. Him. It, 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 it's the the thing that with like The Rock and all of them. It's like they know who they are. The, the yeah. Rock has no shame. Yeah. With what he's doing, he's like, yeah, I don't act. I'm just putting my face on these things. Yeah. And I'm just all I care about is making more money. I don't care about. Oh, what was it though? I, I'm so sorry. I, I, you probably were like, why are you reacting this way? But The Rock did just sign on to a project that that could change everything this about the, one the Rock. You sent me. Yeah, do you remember what it was? It was with the Safty brother, with the Benny Safty. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I texted you back and said I don't have the mental space for this right now, so I don't know what it is. Yeah, Benny Safty to direct Dwayne Johnson in an A twenty four movie about MMA legend Mark Carr. So that is like he could literally go from my least favorite actor to one of the guys in one movie. Cause if that's what happened with Adam Sandler, I was not a fan. I did like him in punch drunk love, but other than that, I'm like, I just can't stand this guy. I see uncut gems. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a Sandler guy. So it could happen. It could happen. Cause the Safdie brothers are, are doing something. Let's talk about Aquaman. Let's talk about Aquaman. So what do you want to talk about? So we get through all the beginning stuff. Yeah. Um, and then we learn that global warming is accelerating at an alarming rate. There's crazy weather conditions happening. I got to look up what that element is called because that yeah. was another thing where I'm like, hey, the movie has this element in it. I like it. Um, yeah. So climate change is going really terribly. Um, and uh, Arthur Aquaman, his he has an idea to why don't we bring ourselves to the surface and and make ourselves known to the surface world. That way we can work together to solving this climate crisis yeah. so that we can give them our technology. We can use our technology together. Um, and the board is very much traditional, whatever, like, no, 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 no. The only reason we would come up there is to defeat them and kill them all. Yes. Um, and that's, a, that's a classic. We love, we love that. That's mm-hmm. the black Panther kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked up what the element is called, and it's called orichalcum. And I yeah. thought, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. And I love that. But it loaded up an entire Wikipedia page. Is it real? 
is a metal mentioned in several ancient writings, including the story of Atlantis in the Creatius of Plato. Hello! Within the dialogue, Creatius says that Uracocum had been considered second only to gold in value and had been <gasps> found and mined in many parts of Atlantis in ancient times, but that by Creatius' own time, Uracalcum was known only by name. So, Lost Kingdom? Not just yeah. Atlantis, okay. but something else? This movie just got even cooler. Wow. That's so that's cool. cool. Um, so let's then, talk, should we talk about Manta? Yes. Okay. So he is still in the pursuit of killing Arthur because he killed his dad. That's what he's going for. But he needs ancient Atlantean technology to repair his stuff because it was damaged in the last movie. Mm -hmm. He has uh, enlisted not only a crew of people, but Randall Park. I never caught the character's name. I don't think I did. Should either. I look it up? No. Um, Randall Park, who in the last movie was shown to be like a cons conspiracy, crazy cuckoo guy. Yeah, who wants to prove the existence of Atlantis. Yeah, he's always great, whatever he's in. He is. I, I have some thoughts about this, though. What? I think, so throughout this movie, at the beginning, Randall Park is doing like a voiceover, like captain's log, explaining yeah. information that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Throughout. And um, stuff that like, I feel like in the first movie, they didn't bother explaining. It's just like, oh, these are cool machines. I don't need to explain why they are or what they work. I just feel like this was reshoot slash studio notes. Sure. Um, I think he still was in the movie quite a bit, mm -hmm. but I think they had him in the movie maybe a little too much oh, for to me. Oh, to carry some exposition. And he, yeah, he's like always delivering exposition in, in a way that, that I really didn't think the movie needed. Hmm. Well, he did do some things. He did. No, that's why I'm saying I still think he was in the movie in like the original yeah. script, but I think maybe he was like 20% less. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I do, I do like him, but it was a little like, oh, great. Here he goes again with like a log explaining like this ship that, I, that nobody needs the explanation. I for. like, I like the character. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I like the character for, you know, that he's had this one goal in his life and he's get, finally given the potential opportunity to achieve it. Yeah. But it's like selling his soul. To, like how, how far is he willing to go to achieve it? Uh huh. Because like when they get to Atlantis and he's seeing it, you know, it's like full of wonder. His word is astounding. He says it a lot. That felt very comic booky. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like at what cost? Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. So he's working with David Kane. They're in the Antarctic. It's. I think so. Okay. Um, they're and, trying to find ancient technology. Yeah, and they stumble across this crazy cave water place. Rift in the iceberg that they're on or something yeah there's a cool like tentacle monster very horror-esque yeah very fun i like that and then they're swimming around and david kane finds a black trident yep okay trident okay you got another pro in the column of this yeah okay, we we're, you're already telling there's a gold trident and a black trident sure cool put okay it to put the black trident together what happens he does and then he sees this cool cool looking bad guy it's like sauron meets the ghost in Return of the King meets an end. He looked cool. He looked cool when he was in the environment that was he was animated in. Later on in the movie, like at the end, uh -huh. not so much. Oh, so, I thought he was cool. All I just time. mean effects by that point. Oh, it was a little janky. I see. I think I see. he looked best in all the other stuff. Sure, but sure. I do like the stuff that was like growing on him. But um, yeah, he was he was awesome. He was kind of like the Green Knight, actually. Sure. He had that vibe. Although, he wishes. Right, right. But yeah. But all this, I mean, and He's I... He's like, work for me, and I will give you Aquaman's head on a silver platter, basically. Yeah. And how? what did you think about this development? Fine. Yeah. Everything in this movie is fine to me. Uh -huh. I, I had a good time. So, I, I, I do... I do like the... This guy's got a personal vendetta against someone, and then this evil devil is like i'll give it to you mm -hmm. and he's like great and he doesn't even like question the implications or what what he will be doing that will harm the world yeah because it was per he's blinded by revenge yeah fine with it i think i i ultimately like it but i think watching the movie it just took me off guard a little bit why just because i kind of thought it was just gonna be manta 
just operating on his own again. But and he is. He can't. Yeah. They made that very clear. Cause later on in the movie, like towards the end, when basically this this devil is like left leaves him, uh-huh. he has not even an one iota of a chance. Yeah. Physically. Yeah, no. So Yeah. It's a good point. He needs like metaphysical help. Spirit or mm. Yeah, fa- fantastic. Spiritual. Yeah, spiritual. <laughs> he needs to but, pray like, he, more. He needs like fantasy to help yeah. him because he's just a, but a mere mortal. Yeah, and he has been searching for it, and so it's still like his onus. It's not like mm-hmm. he's because I was kind of feeling like when I left, it's like, well, he was sort of possessed, which kind of takes away. But but no, he he knew what he was doing, and he just continued to make the choices to do it. He it just the slowly just amplified over, it. overtook him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So because they're basically they did have the same goal. I mean, in a way, because yeah. they both needed his blood. One right. was for revenge, one was to break a curse. Right. Because, you know, Necris was stricken from the Chronicles. Yes. Um. So, all of that happens, and you're like, cool, okay, this is a good setup. I I don't feel like this is a step below Aquaman, one. No. Um. But then... Manta goes to Atlantis, or they they go to the place that's storing the, what's it called? Um, a mall, uh, 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 or a calcum or a calcum. They go to a storehouse underwater naturally. Yeah. Um, and steal a ton of it. When, when he did the, the log and they're in the big boat, he said something like the log and oh, when he's doing oh. like the captain's log thing, the, yeah. uh, notebook, whatever. Uh, he says something about the boat being like, I can't believe we, this old boat was able to work. And my first thought as someone who read this book earlier this year this is so stupid, and I got excited about it, which makes me feel even stupider. Is I was like, "Oh, this is a submarine from Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, and it's real." <laughs> like that's part of the story. Yeah. Oh, did, I, it make, did it remind you of it though? Because it reminded me. It seemed steampunky. Yeah, like Twenty Thousand Leagues. It did. It did. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was so cool. The, the sets in this movie rocked. Yeah, and no, I love the, when the sets boat look like cool. sets, especially yeah. a movie that's like so high fantasy. Uh huh. We we've like done away and and oh. For many reasons, that's good because you're more immersed in the story when it, when it's like you feel like you're in it. But there's something to be said, like the labyrinths of the world, the dark crystals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Aquamans where it's like, this is just a set, though. And I feel like I would I just give. Can you give me an hour so I can run around in there? Yeah. Yeah. Play? You want that. You that, want that's that. How the, that's what both movies feel to me. And I really like that. But I felt like this set was like a leg- it looked it enveloped me in the story more than like. Oh, cool! This the new Marvel movie has another fake ship. I know, and this was like tactile because it was so old. It was just a bunch of beep boop beep boops buttons and yeah. like big giant fat lights, and there was so much space on it. It looked like a hammerhead shark. It was cool. Other than yeah. like their ships looking the same as like the like the Atlanta ships that they fly around in uh-huh those are very much like what you'd expect they're very high tech looking yeah yeah and it's like well i'm glad the bad guys don't look like that too right yeah it's just not as interesting yeah uh but the cool thing is it's still like you know you know in a, in a marvel movie typically it's like oh cool it's it's black panther and you got little you know saucer ships that are flying around and this one's like no, 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 these are giant sharks. Uh-huh. Or these are giant stingrays flying around. Well, I mean, no, giant jellyfish looking things. Well, all of the above. There's yeah. there's all sorts of different ships. Yeah, those little ships were really cool too. I, I loved how they yeah, moved. I, I like that much more. It was all so cool. So they're they, riding robot sharks in this movie. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about those things. Yeah, those were really cool I'm too. I'm just saying like the vehicles in general. I like at the beginning of this movie uh, when he's taking down those pirates, Aquaman, and yeah. he's, he names the seahorse that he rides. And he's, he's like, like, he's always here when I need him. <laughs> and then it never shows up again until the end of the movie. Yeah, that was <laughs> it's like, weird. I guess he didn't need him. <laughs> it just but it was weird. a cool looking seahorse. Oh yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Giddy up, I say. But they steal the um Or stuff, a Colcum. Or a Colcum. Uh, or but, Calcum, sorry. Calcum. Then they are caught and they fly into Atlantis. We see th- then it's like a fun action sequence. Yeah. The FX are pretty janky, pretty yeah. weird, but I thought it, it was, was cool. fun to me that you didn't know it was in Atlantis until it, no. it was revealed. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. And so there's a big fight. Nicole Kidman is taking care of business, taking care of business. Um, and Mara gets really hurt. Yeah. By um, Manta's beams. 
is energy beams, of course. Yeah. Um, I thought she was dead. And I was like, well, that's one way to get her out of the movie. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Aquaman shows up and defends and is able to prevent the attack any further, but is not able to, you know, Catch they're them, still get away. Yeah. Cause he, he makes like a, a, you know, like a passenger freight tr- freight, you know, caterpillar thing, monster vehicle An fly eel, down. An eel, that's what it was. Uh, We're underwater, of course. <laughs> and, and Aquaman has to choose to save that. Yeah. Which is kind of cool watching the movies back to back because I feel like the Aquaman for the, from the first movie would not have bothered. Yeah. With the passengers. He yeah. would have just gone after Manta. Mm-hmm. So he's developed a little bit. And then they start talking. Him, uh, Dolph Lundgren's still in this movie for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he talks like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's and nuts. He and Nicole Kidman, and they're like, what do we do? We keep... So they, they're stealing this stuff. This stuff is the number one driving cause of any catastrophic disaster, natural disaster on this planet. Yeah. What could they be doing with it? And um, Aquaman's only idea is we got to get Orm out. We got to get Orm. He worked with him in the past. He'd know what to do. You yeah. know how to find them. And then uh, the audience that we're in, everyone's going, Orm, 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 Orm. Yeah. If you've seen The Boy and the Heron, it was like the scene where the frogs start enveloping the boy and they start saying, join us, join us. But they're saying, Orm, Orm, yeah. Orm, Orm, Orm. And we were the ones they were enveloping, lifting us up to the <laughs> ceiling of the theater. We had this weird thing that I've never seen before, never happened before in, in a theater that I've been to. Where the movie, like the second act on, it got dim. It would dim part, by like fifteen percent. Was that the movie or our theater? It, that was the theater for okay. sure. Because okay. it would do it like in the same shot. Yeah, it dimmed like fifteen percent, and then like five minutes later, it would brighten back up. Did someone like fall asleep back there and lean on? But a it button? happened like six or seven times. It was weird. Yeah, and then it made me think all these movies like. You know, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. We talked about how dim that movie was. And it's like, did someone like flip that switch that did yeah. that and they didn't flip it back? Yeah. Because it was kind of a considerable amount. It was. It was very strange. It was interesting. I did um, not like it. Yeah. No, I didn't either. So he's got to go break, break Orm out, but he's got to do it so no one can know. Because so not only like was Orm stopped in the last movie, uh-huh. but he is a prisoner for life because he killed the king of those fish people. The fishermen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're getting yeah. into the weeds on this. Uh-huh. And he is imprisoned in the Sahara Desert by the coolest looking Yeah, these guys skeleton are cool. This dudes. is worth your price of admission. Truly, I say. truly is. And the weird bug things that they They're ride. like dust skeleton if men. Fantasy movies are if are nothing but to create real like random offshoot species of things that yeah. look so cool. That is like the best thing fantasy gives us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is creating really cool species that you get to hang out with for 10 minutes, 15, sometimes yeah. 20. Sometimes a glance. And yeah, and then you keep going. But on top of that, you have you're joined by Topo, who was the octopus from the first movie that played drums. So it is? It is, yeah. Okay. And now he has to help Aquaman. Yeah, he's his sidekick. By like breaking in and helping and stuff. Topo's in this. Yeah. And his name is Topo. Yeah. You got Topo, you got Orm. Uh, what more do we need? Nothing. I, th- I think the Aquaman movies, for me, are like what other people say about like Fast and Furious, yeah. where they're like, no, it's just it's just fun. Although, guys, I'm not turning my brain off when I'm watching this. No, I, I think... It's a feast for the sense, for the eyes. Uh, yeah, I mean, my my thing is like, if, if you go gonzo enough, I can forgive little little dumb things that that i've seen a thousand times or don't really care about yeah you give me topo i'm happy about that you know yeah and i'm still critiquing the movie a little bit you give me topo i'm willing to look overlook a few things yeah you give me orm i'm willing to look over uh, a lot of things yeah Yeah. so they break orm out of this prison cool set yet again he is completely uh malnourished they give him only enough water so that he won't die yeah um cool and they did the they did a smart thing where he was his hair was really long and his beard was really long so he didn't have the giant head on a tiny body situation oh you're right yeah so that that was smart um they get to the ocean fun action sequence of them getting yeah of them breaking out which is hard to describe just go watch the movie yeah but it's sweet he face plants in the water and the water washes over him and then he explodes out of the water and he's buff it's Patrick Wilson. That's cool. And he fights him. I like that. Yeah, me too. 
Then this thing happens where they're like, okay, we need to go figure this whole thing out. Come with me. Yeah, Micah me. feels pretty smart about this. I felt pretty good because he starts running and his arms are weirdly at his sides and then not moving. And Jordan's like, what was he doing with his arms? And I'm like, he's not, he's on water all the, he's in water all the time. He doesn't know how to use his arms for running. And then later in the movie, they explained it. And, and he I started was like, using his arms and he ran much faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Good touch. Um, but, you know, of course, Orm is like, I don't want to work with you. But... Um. Yeah. Yeah. And it, Arthur it, is he saying first yes. Got you have there, to. He was like, "No, I'm. I'm a prisoner. I am not." Yeah. Like, he's, he's a noble so, guy. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Like. Like. It, he is, and he isn't because of what he's done. Yeah. But um. Yeah. And, and I like how basically throughout the movie, they do develop a, a brotherhood, and you you know you learn that Orm said that his dad trained basically trained him from the moment he was born to await Arthur to come and usurp his, his throne. Yeah. So that's what he was waiting for this whole time. That's why he was such a bad guy in the first movie because right. it was exactly what was told to him would happen. Yeah. And he had to defend it at all costs. And then he, you know, finds out Arthur never wanted any of it. He never wanted to be Ocean Master. Yeah. But it's, you know, been thrust upon him. Well, and uh, Arthur has never been Ocean Master. Oh, no, no. Let's but he's never wanted to be clear. King of Atlantis. Yeah, yeah. It's never something he's aspired to do. And Orm's like shocked by by this. He's like, "Well, yeah. that's why we were fighting." Yeah. In the last movie, and he's like, and he's "No, like, I was no. just defending Earth, basically." Yeah. And making sure that things didn't get out of hand. Yeah. So. And and Orm kind of re- like him realizing that he made the the power caused him to go down dark paths that ended up in murder. Yeah. Because he was so afraid of losing power. So on and so forth. Yeah. And so all of this is great. And he looked good realizing it. Okay. I know. Patrick Wilson, what a handsome man. Gosh. The guy, crazy. I mean. It's, he's probably the most handsome person with the weirdest film career. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, he is, and he's just so good. I mean, he absolutely carries this movie on his back. Oh, my gosh. He is. Yeah. He is so much better than anyone else in this movie. <laughs> it's it's bonkers. He's so good. Um. You just gotta love him, though. And, um, so then they are, they need to go to the pirate bay. Yeah, to, so, to, for the contact. So they have, a, here's another thing. Okay, maybe you don't like some of the things in this movie. Then they go to a place where the fish kingdoms of the world, it's it's a hive of scum, of, scum and villainy, and they've taken ships that have sunk and created a cove for pirates to hang out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you don't Mm -hmm. like it still what's your problem Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and they're like gambling and stuff and and you know what's something i appreciated when this scene started i was like okay it's classic everybody's trying to do moss eisley spaceport Mm -hmm. everybody and maybe this is just me but i felt like it was going and it's given you a little bit of that but they didn't double down like they did in ant-man and the wasp we really didn't spend that much time here and i think that was good yeah, he, it's like James Wan was like, I know I have to do this, but I'm not going to try to top the Star Wars one because it mm-hmm. can't be done yet, mm-hmm. at least. Nobody has and done it. And it certainly shouldn't, they shouldn't start trying underwater. Yeah. Because the movie already looks kind of weird with some stuff. But there's cool fish that are singing. They're in yeah. a band. That really got you. Yeah. You laughed. I, I I literally hee heed through much of this movie. Oh, yeah. And some I was of it, just, I was nodding a lot. Some of it was uh, with the movie, and some of it was at the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. And might I also add, the one-two punch of of seeing the trailer for Dune, which when the three worms came out, I did fist pump in the theaters, and then it's followed by the trailer for Furiosa, which, yes, we will be covering on this podcast later this year. I fist pumped at that too. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like no good blockbusters coming out next year, but those two are going to carry us through. Those are blockbusters. What do you mean? There's like no, uh, but there's like no other blockbusters. Okay, okay. I'm just telling you that those stuff. are. Yeah, those are the ones that are going to carry us through okay. blockbuster wise. Okay. Um, and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, hopefully. That baby looks like it's going to honk. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. You know what I mean? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, somebody lock us up. <laughs> um, okay. So they go to the to Kingfish, voiced by Martin Short. Fun Which cameo. You, you picked up immediately, and it blew my mind. I think I got a Martin Short sense. You you were like, you were like, is that Martin Short? And I go, 
I don't know. And then it kept talking and you went, oh, no, it's not. And then the movie ended and it said Martin Short. And I, j- I was absolutely mm-hmm. outstanding. I got the, the arm thing. You I got, got the, the Martin, Martin Short, Short thing. thing. That was impressive. So he's the contact. He is like a job of the hut. Yeah. Fat dude. Fun. Fish. And he's like, I ruled this place. You can't get nothing out of me. And then Aquaman's like, well, how about you give me the information and I won't tattletale on you to everyone else about all the debauchery that's going on here. Yeah. And then the Kingfish is like, you think you can threaten me? And then they fight very briefly. Aquaman bests everybody immediately. Right. And uh, threatens the Kingfish with uh, putting a helmet on his head and taking the water out. Great. And then the Kingfish gives him all the info they need. Yeah. And they go to the loo and the, well, Topo gives a big squid ink and they get away. Yep. And, and basically there's this volcano that's hidden by human science in the South Pacific. Yes. Where the, um, uh, or, Orico- co- or a calcum or calcum is being burned into the atmosphere and the, and the earth's temperature is rising rapidly. Mm-hmm. And they're doing this so that they can basically thaw out that, of Necris? Yep, yep. That's what they're doing? Thought the kingdom. Okay. Yeah, the lost kingdom. Mm. And so they... Stricken g- from the Chronicles? It was actually stricken from the Chronicles, okay. yes. Which I, I think the movie's pretty clear about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're discussing what are they going to do. Nicole's there. Nicole Kidman. Um, Orm is there. Arthur is there. And many others. I thought they just went straight there. Oh, I thought they discussed it, and then, well, who cares? Yeah. One thing I did find odd, though, at the end of this movie, when Manta attacks the um, the house, mm-hmm. steals the child, and, and then Nicole Kidman comes up there, I was like, oh, why doesn't she live with them? Because I she's, assume that she does. But she's, like, not around at any of the she beginning She is of in the, the beginning. Movie. I think they show her at some, some family function. Oh, do they? Yeah. I, it was just clear, like, looking no, back, it's No, they totally like, are, because the whole reason that she was never there was to protect Arthur, and she doesn't need to do that anymore. Well, I I know, I just, I think it's pretty clear that she was not available for oh, some I mean, of, of the course, shooting. Oh, I mean, of course, of course. But know? I, no, I I think they're all a happy family. Okay, okay. Co- coha- cohabitating in that big house. Cohabitating. Yeah. Um, so they are like, okay, go to the island, send us the coordinates. They do so. And it's this weird, freaky jungle that basically the Oricocrum, right? Uh, Yeah, Oricalcum, I think. Oricalcum, yeah. Uh, has like mutated this island. Yes, yes. Fun. (laughs) Yeah. There's a giant butterfly. It's like it's eaten by a giant flower. And that's right. That, that, that's when Arthur's telling Orm, like, you got to try all these surface level things. You got you got a lot of prejudices, man. I thought this was a funny conversation. I did. I thought that was good. That's um, like Jason Momoa at his best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So telling him he's like, you got to get rid of some of those prejudices and like really open your mind. And he's yeah. Like, you got to get a cheeseburger and a beer. Yeah. And then he tricks Orm into eating a cockroach, to which our audience ate that up. Our audience was freaking out. People were going, oh. Yeah. To this ew. very CGI cockroach. Yeah, and I mean, we're, I'm not talking like one person did it. The the whole left side of the theater was like erupting and like they were so disgusted uh-huh. that he was eating a cockroach, but like in delight. Uh-huh. He um, did it. He did it. Yeah, it was, I feel like our audience was very into this movie uh-huh. in a way that I didn't expect for uh-huh. how mediocre reviews and people are receiving it. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe we were in a little vortex where it was like, all right, we're going to go home and tell everybody this movie rocks. Well, it's Christmas break. It is, yes. Kids are home. Yeah. So whoop de doo and dickery dog. Give them something to do. Right. Um so they get they, they They get chased by grass giant grasshoppers that are feeding on a giant mouse. Yeah, cool. Um and the mouse looked real bad, but other than that. The cool. mouse looked bad? Yeah. I actually was, didn't think it looked that bad. It was, uh, not not good. Okay. Um and then they create a bridge with a giant statue. Yeah, it's a metaphor, metaphor etc. Funny, funny, cute, cute. Um, they get away from the grasshoppers and then they find where they need to go while this is all happening and where they're going is where they've been working on burning all this crap. And while that's all yeah. been happening or a calcum, of course, uh, Randall park has been, you know, questioning like, this is wrong. Right. What are we doing here? I need to leave. And David Kane is like, you see the door? It's right there. Good luck making it out of that forest. Right. Right. As you've seen it like alive and stuff. And he's like, I think I'll stick around for a little bit longer. Right. Um, But he's seeing David King's 
uh, David King descending into madness. Yes. Um, and is because he's a scientist seeing what they're doing to the environment. And mm-hmm. it's like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, and so by the time our bros get here, we get introduced to this fun set. Another fun set that I just want to play around on. That yeah. seems real. And and I'm sure, uh, you, I mean, obviously there's like quite a bit of green screen because it's a superhero movie. Blue screen, whatever. Yeah. But like when they first get there and they're running through the set, it's a long shot. Yeah, and yeah. Who knows if it's actually one shot, but I, th- I liked it. It gave us the layout of the land. No, it was it was good. It was cool. And yeah, the set's kind of got a little Goonies Pirate Cove vibe yeah. to it. Um, I, th- I think it's great. Yeah. And so then they're attacking the area and Manta is attacking and his little octopus machines are well, attacking that, too. They are stealthily going through to try and take things down and they make it to like the control room and they take down some of the scientists and then Randall Park comes in and is like, please help me, help me, help me. I I want to help you guys. This right. is all bad. Right. Then shocker, uh, jump scare moment of an explosion. And that's when we get the joke. Yeah. Um, an explosion interrupts them. They've been discovered. Now there's the fight. Yep. Great fight. I think it's a good fight, yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun that uh, Orm throws a chain around, and then uh, Arthur is able to then, like, use a hook to knock this See, thingy-mabobber this over. this is way more interesting than let's compare to a big fight scene in Marvel's. Oh, yeah. When they're on that planet with the singing people. Yeah. And they're fighting. Um the, they, they basically fought on a flat surface, <laughs> right. and that's it. Right, right. With a, with a surrounded by a blue screen that yeah. was just water and the the spaceship that they were on. Yeah, that's it. That is the most exciting it got in that fight scene. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, I guess. Uh, is it Miss Marvel? What's uh, her name? The the girl, the yeah. little girl. Not little girl, but the the youngest. I already forget her name. Yeah, Miss Marvel. Uh, she, Kamala Khan. She's given like a scarf that whips around, but also like that. Wasn't interesting compared. Like, <laughs> right, like, right. So then, so then we go to this scene. We got a weird set, uh-huh. and then we got a lady fighting them in like a jellyfish giant contraption machine. That's very like Matrix Revolution. Yes. It's oh, cool. that that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, the neck the, suits and stuff. Yeah. Well, also the things and the that sentinels. Are sentinels. Yeah. Um, but th- but it's like because it's such a established area, it's establishing the limitations of the area. Yeah, and they're using like their environment. Yeah. It's like in the first movie how he defeats Manta by throwing that chain ball around his head. Yep. That's interesting. That's yep. cool. Very it, cool. It's just... And it, I feel like it actually isn't that hard to come up with just a little bit of something. A I little know. bit of juice besides I'm punch hard. I'm who... I mean, I guess it's just storyboarding is where it starts. Yeah. With the, with the director. Yeah. Because I just don't... I just don't get it. How, like, in a... Marvel has just gotten so quite frankly lazy yeah with that kind of stuff i mean i every movie is a little bit different because even if you go but back some to like of them aren't ones, no, you know no, what i mean aren't, and that's but the like problem. some of the older ones are just as lazy as they are today feeling yeah but it is disappointing yeah i mean guardians of course that, n- oh no of course notwithstanding yeah you know it's just it, this movie is leaps and bounds better than marvel yeah the last like three besides guardians yeah I mean, oh, I'm meaning specifically Mar- the Marvels or whatever it's called. Oh, the Marvels, yeah. But, oh, and, and this movie's not better than Black Panther Wakanda. That'd be, no, 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 it's yeah. not. Anyway, but, um, yeah, the Marvels was, I, I it think. It was a bad movie. I feel like uh, when we watch, I think our episode, we're like, yeah, it's fun, it's fine. It's like, I would never watch that again, though. No, I'd never watch it again. I mean, I still stand where I think I said, like, the movie was so non-offensive. Yeah. Which is probably part of what's working against it. It's not really saying anything. Yeah, an absolute five out of ten sure like the definition of a five out of ten yeah movie. yeah but i mean this is this is like but a, again does that movie have uh orm no no no, no orm to be seen. does it have a necris a, a kingdom, kingdom that was stricken from the chronicles <laughs> no kingdom stricken from the chronicles but by, it's got by, quite quite an uphill battle <laughs> that movie. yeah i mean by my count zero stricken stricken things from the chronicle yeah um did you know, too, um, I don't know if you caught this in the movie, but they did actually strike the Christmas Chronicles with Kurt Russell from the record as well. Oh, wow. Those were struck in from the Chronicles as well. Both both Christmas Chronicles 1 and that, 2. Huh? Yeah. They're just not Goldie Hawn fans down there. Is she in those? I think I think the first movie ends with like a reveal where it's like Mrs. Claus is here and it's Goldie Hawn. Just so that they can work together. 
and then and the then second White movie Russell's in it or two probably probably yeah yeah but okay. those those have been stricken so yeah 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 we can never cover those on our podcast because they've been stricken what do you do you don't cover them no stricken yeah great word so this fight happens our good guys make it out orm gets uh Injured, very injured. But at, during the fight, he picks up the trident and sees all. Uh, R- he, Orm? Yeah, he picks up the oh, trident you're right, and he you're sees. Because right. then later on, all the dudes are there, including the Brian King. Yes. Including Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Um, he said that he's like, it, not only did he see everything, it's like he was there and he was remembering it. Yes. So this is when we get the explanation of Necris. Yes. The kingdom stricken from the Chronicles. Yes. And it's cool. It's cool. Did you ever? Did we ever find out what it was in Lord of the Rings? Oh no! I'll look it up right now. Okay, but Necris was this very powerful civilization kingdom ruled by Atlan's brother, um, and he just wanted more and more and more power. They stumbled upon the uh, whatever the stuff is, the green stuff. Uh huh. Um, Minas Morgul is what we're thinking. What of. it is? Yes, of course. Uh, it had Minas Morgul vibes. Yes. Um, but then we also said anything that's black and green gives me Minas Morgul vibes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But the king becomes consumed with this stuff and madness and power that he turns all of his people into monsters, including himself, consumed with this power, trying yep. to be the best. And his the only way his brother could stop it all was basically like casting some kind of spell. When they said use the actual word spell, I was like, we are doing this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sealed it with his blood. Sealed it with his blood and it froze everything in yeah. his kingdom. And then I think it was after that they struck it from the Chronicles. Yes. After that it was stricken. Yeah, struck in, is what I said. <laughs> and and all of that is so cool. It's so Lord of the I mean, it really reminded me of the prologue to the yeah, Fellowship of the Ring. It was cool. And it was fun. Yeah. So they basically learn all that info and then they're like, we got to, oh, oh, this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. They're like, the only thing that can break the curse is the bloodline of Atlan. Right. And three of those people are here right now. So we just got to make sure you can't get any of us. And then Mara and Arthur look at each other and they're like, we're not the only like, ones. Whoa. Cut, smash cut two. Papa, uh, Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> hanging with his grandson. Arthur Jr. Uh huh. And gets ambushed by Manta. Manta, who kidnaps the baby. Yeah. And I knew, I know this movie wasn't going to go anywhere, but I was like, okay, you're getting into some dicey territory for me. I better not see this baby in any precarious situations. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I knew they weren't going to, it's not that kind of movie. No. But takes the baby and they're going to Necris. Necris? Nec- Necris. Necris, yes. And, um, <clears throat> So while that's happening, Randall Park is is again struggling with you what know to do. what he should do. And he sees that he has a baby now. And there's kind of this like he's seeing he's seeing the stuff in the mirror. I think he even looks at the grabs the trident at he one sees point. He sees what's happening, yeah. So things are not looking looking yeah. good. Um and so But so they make it to Antarctica where they started and they almost were done thawing everything. They just need to fire a missile yeah. to unlock it. That's what they do. Yeah. And they get in. Yeah. Good guys are right on their tails. Uh-huh. And uh, we got Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Probably talked in the last movie that his he's perfectly casted because his name's Dolph. Like Dolphin. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, Hi, Gilmore. Welcome. Him and his crew um, at, at Atlanta's people... Um, and, and the Brian King, the Brian King. Yeah. Who he has some very just kind of dumb jokes, but they work for me because it's a freaking crustacean saying it. <laughs> right. Right. But talking about how they cut his hand off in the last movie, he's like, and it took me a whole year to grow it back. Yeah. And then at one point someone said something about closing their eyes and he's like, I can't close my eyes because <laughs> I don't have any eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. I know. It was, and then it, by the end of this whole battle, his hand is cut off. He's like, oh, it happened again. again. Yeah. They're like, all right. Oh, okay, Brian King. <laughs> but he is the Brian King, so we bow down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so they launched this attack. And 
there's this there's this nice moment where Orm looks like he's gonna abandon this the Dolph. king Dolph to die. Yeah. Um when he could help him. And I was I was fifty fifty. I was like, maybe he won't help him. I yeah. don't know. And, and he and does they, help him. I was thinking maybe he wouldn't and they would like set up the third movie or something. Yeah. By when, some choice that was made. Yeah. But I was like, I don't know. We spent the whole movie him changing. I don't think they're gonna betray that. Yeah. So they didn't. He saves him. Big battle with the Necros people. Yeah. Pretty fun. They're cool. Yeah. Not as cool as the cool. other guys, but But they're cool. They're but they're cool. cool. Um, um and then there, Randall gives him the baby, uh, David Kane, to like shed blood. But it's a bomb. The bag. It's a bomb. Baby is somewhere else. Um, he's about to get the baby, and then they come in and stop that from happening. Yeah. Mary gets the baby and leaves. Yep. Now it's like, well, Arthur's here. I'm going to get your blood. Yep. So they fight, and David Kane's got all of this power from the Necros King. Yeah. Um, and, and no one man should have all that power. No one man. Is that what they say? <laughs> no, that's a that's a Kanye West song. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, they sp- spill Arthur's blood and break the, the spell. Yep. And you seemed a little worried that they weren't going to use this. Yeah, I was king. a little worried as it was going because it was, you know, this this movie has, is like half hour shorter than the previous movie. And then, and then it's like they're getting to the end here. And then I'm thinking, I guess maybe they just don't break them out and they just resolve all their differences before. I was much relieved to find out that they did spill the blood and the Necros King was awake. Were you wanting more than that though? No, I just wanted him you to just, I just, just wanted, wanted him to wake up. That was, that I was loved good. it. I yeah. love yeah. Um so he he wakes up and he's like, Whoa ha 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 power. Yeah, yeah. And pretty much. Um Aquaman throws his black trident at him to kill him. Obviously it doesn't work, and then he throws the golden trident and it's it had breaks through the black trident and kills the king. But but before that, there is a nice moment where Orm gets the black trident and mm-hmm. it's like, we can oh, kill right, right, Aquaman. Right. The kingdom you can be would ocean be yours. Master. You can be ocean master. And he is like, he has to fight it. And Arthur's like, you're my brother. We're in this together. We're a family. And you have to let go. You have to let go. And then he gives him the trident. So I, his I character it. arc finishes there. Awesome. And then I loved this too. The 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 king is defeated, and the lost kingdom is now lost once again. And then Manta is gonna fall down this pit and die. And then Aquaman, instead of leaving him like he would in the first movie, he reaches out. And David Kane chooses, and he death. says never, and yeah. and lets himself go and dies. Yeah, I like that. Me too. That was unexpected. The the him letting himself die yeah i thought that he'd get him up and it'd be like all right this will be tough but i forgive you you know something yeah and then um and then they get to the surface and they kind of talk about it and they're like man orm you're you're still a wanted criminal but it's too bad that you died down there yeah there's so much wreckage we'd never be able to find you yes i like that i like it too so instead of returning him because he would be a prisoner again yeah but yeah, they're gonna wash it, wash it away in the o- great ocean. In the that great it is. ocean, yes. Um, and he goes off. I, I like to sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, when they do that, and he's like, "Wow, thanks, guys," and then he turns and dives. Yeah, you know, before it cuts to show the actor actually, or you know, the CGI like diving. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever just think like them shooting that? And he's like, "Thanks," and he has to turn and do this. Well, it, I did <laughs> notice, like, like his, he maybe like jumped onto a phone onto a foam pad. Well, I noticed his angle was odd okay, when he jumped, okay. and then it showed the angle that looked like, be- yeah. you know, like the beautiful like Olympic angle. It, yeah, <laughs> Look, just imagine that they had to roll, <laughs> say action for that scene, and then he had to do that, probably land on a little pad, and uh-huh. then they say cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk about ripping you out of the moment. Yeah, um, but yeah, all that happens, and. Then, then there's this awful scene. I mean, it, it it almost like undercuts the entire movie. What? It's so bad, where they're like, okay, the Atlanteans and the and the hum, humans are going to coexist. The surface people. So he comes to a UN meeting, which is just oh, like, oh yeah, oh my god, <laughs> it's just like in the park, and there's like all different ethnicities in the park, like. In in a way, it was like so the UN like went outside to do this, which made no sense to me. Well, this has been in other movies. I feel like really? I feel like there's got to be an X Men movie where you have people on this lawn. 
where the Statue of Liberty is in the background. I'm not joking. I feel like uh, maybe this it is like a been U- done. Maybe it is a real I, UN I, thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But then Aquaman's like wearing his gold thing, and he's he's and like, he we're is gonna an absolute floating head. Yeah, we're gonna coexist. Yada yada yada. And then he ends it with like, oh, and you know what else? I'm Aquaman. Oh my gosh, it was bizarre. It was real weird. I mean, that could not have been planned. That that was that was like the fifth reshoot, that, yeah. you know, or thir- third set of reshoots. I mean, oh, woof. That was a that was like really bad. Yeah, James Wan was not available to direct that day. They did. I don't like think unit. so. I don't think so. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I, and then our mid credit scene. Yeah. Is Patrick or Orm? Sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm so oh, sorry. Gosh. Orm. Um. Is eating that burger, getting that burger and beer. Man, does it look good. And then he gets a little cockroachy, puts it in, and a big crunch. And again, the audience, ooh, ooh. When we walked out, there was this kid, and he's like, that cockroach? Ew. <laughs> like, what? Just the little things, Mike. I mean, I'm glad that people had that reaction, but it's it's kind of confusing, yeah. you know? But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's a, as far as the, as far as this movie self-contained goes, it does feel like if it had a little more time to breathe, it could be as good as the first movie, in my opinion. Sure. Like, as much as I almost feel like the first movie's maybe a little too long. Yeah. This one felt a little too short and a little rushed. Okay. And it did, I don't know how much of this is me just knowing the production details going into the movie. Yeah. But it felt like there was a few things where you go, ah, this this is, you know, not how it would have been under better circumstances. Yeah. And maybe this is me just not giving an F at this point because it's the last one. Yeah. In this universe. But I'm like, I don't know. It was at least as good as the first one. Yeah. I don't think it's there, but I, yeah, that's fair. I Yeah. I, I think I liked the story better yeah. than the first one. But you won't get the story without the first one. Right, of course. Um, But... I, the as far as speaking to the grander DCEU, was it a good send off for the DCEU? It's almost the perfect encapsulation because yes. it's a mixed bag, just like the whole DCEU was, and yeah. it's confusing and sometimes doesn't know what it is, and then often really knows what it is. Yeah, and that's and the I DC know that universe. this universe was canceled. Yes, like it did not get renewed for another season. <laughs> yeah, but you know there was no send off for people you know like end game right if, said goodbye if they said like no more movies after this yeah we would have all been like that's a bummer but that's a great ending yeah this is like okay, okay. yeah yeah and then mike and i followed this movie up with past lives we did watch movie past we lives been waiting to watch for a really long time and it was um the perfect double the feature perfect double feature i mean those two movies couldn't be closer in relation. Yeah. They're almost in conversation with one another. I, I mean, I think I saw Orm walking around in the background. Yeah, past yeah, yeah. Lives, so uh, sorry, past lives, swimming. Past lives rule. So yeah. should should watch if you're should if you're watch. a listener of this pod. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we say goodbye to you, Detective Comics Extended Universe. We say goodbye. We salute you. By this my, is when you put taps in. Oh yeah, maybe I I'll put me humming it earlier <laughs> and on repeat. I was talking through it. Um, oh, so yeah, you we can isolate. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> we salute you. We wish you well. We hope that you rest in peace. And by my estimation, you have eight movies I like and seven that I don't like. And here we really? are. Yeah, that I just was looking at them. So what is that? Aquaman, Aquaman Lost Kingdom, The Suicide Squad. Here we go. Men of Steel, thumbs down. This is Man my Man of Steel. Man of Steel, thumbs down. Batman v Superman, thumbs down. Suicide Squad, thumbs down. Wonder Woman, thumbs up. Justice League, thumbs down. Aquaman, thumbs up. Shazam, thumbs up. Birds of Prey, thumbs down. Damn. Wonder Woman 1984, thumbs up. The Suicide Squad, thumbs up. Black Adam, thumbs down. Shazam Fury of the Gods, thumbs up. The Flash, thumbs down. Aquaman Lost Kingdom, thumbs up. Of course, listen to our episodes to hear more than a mere thumbs up because some of those are kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. But we did it. We Mm -hmm. say goodbye. Never thought 
we'd see it. I never thought we'd see it. And uh, as far as DC Comics are concerned, the only thing we have left to cover is is more The Batman. Uh, but that's on Patreon only. So, you know, get yeah. prepared for whenever the new one comes out and uh, go listen to, I believe, our three-hour episode We on just it? saw an ad for the show, Penguin, the Penguin Show, and we both said, oh, yeah, they're doing that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Surprised Zaslav didn't cut that one. Yeah. So thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you. Go uh, next year. Go take a dip in the ocean. Yeah. I know it's what January? No, we're in December. This is coming out th- this Friday. Yeah. Um, last episode of the year. Yes. Go take a do- go take a polar plunge. Say hi yes. to Orm for us. Oh, and next week we start our oceans series. Ocean's Eleven. Wow, look how fitting that is. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, we did Aquaman, <laughs> and now we're going to start with Ocean's Eleven. Yes. Not as wet. Yeah. It does take place in Las Vegas, so probably the driest Dry. oceanic movie one yeah. could watch. But... <laughs> Um, wow, you're in rare form right now. <laughs> well, and and I do want to say once again, next year we're doing our Patreon series, MPU Legacy, where we cover legacy sequels, and we kick it off this next weekend or week on Wednesday with Tron. So listen to that for as little as $3, and you can start a free trial. So you may as well just start a free yeah. trial, binge everything, then hopefully forget after seven weeks, and then Or keep renew the... because you like what you're hearing. That's even better. And then see what other cool stuff you can get on Patreon. Yeah, there's a lot there. Get us the 50 patrons. We've been trying for like four years. Make it the fifth year that we get there, please. Mm. All right, thanks for listening. Orm. Orm. Bob.